I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. And now, here's the veteran voice of the legal fix, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Lone Star State in Montgomery County, Texas, for a brand new episode of The Legal Fix, a new age radio show presented by the tough law firm, the toughest law firm in town with the toughest lawyers around, answering your toughest legal questions. Introducing first, hosting out of the red corner, the big deal, Bruce Paulson. Tough, joined by Boy Wonder, Brandon Scott Riley, and super lawyer, G.I. Jerome, the golden boy. Jeremy Lee Hall. Thank you, Bruce Buffer. I'm the eraser, the Paula eraser. Hughes, <laughs> substituting today for the big deal, Bruce Tuff. And I'm here, joined by Boy Wonder, Brandon <laughs> Riley. Hey, and in Paula. our second segment, super lawyer, G.I. Jerome, the golden boy, Jeremy Hall, will Government be joining issue. us. <laughs> We invite our listeners to call our hotline at 936-900-2381. We can answer your questions on air if we have time. Your toughest legal questions. For those of you into the numbers, that is 9,369,002,381. So, Paula, you and Diana sit on the what we call the dark wing over on the other side of the hall. And uh, that's like the brain trust. Of the of, of the tough law firm, you know That's it. where all the brains are at. <laughs> Do you know it? But yeah, so Jeremy will be here. I think he got stuck changing a baby diaper. I, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. He's down to like six minutes per change. Um, Ruby says he doesn't change any, but I think <laughs> that he changes like one a week. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, Paul. I just want to give you a hard oh, time. Oh, oh that, that happened accidentally, did it? <laughs> no, it was accidentally on purpose. <laughs> well, today we're going to be discussing a campaign for the bench with our special guest who's here with us today, Laura Watson. Laura Watson is a local attorney, a mediator, and a candidate for judge for the Montgomery County Court at Law Number 3. Laura, welcome to The Legal Fix. We are so glad to have you. Thank welcome you so much for having fix. me. I'm very excited about being here. Very well, cool. we're glad to have you, too. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, ma'am. So uh, mm -hmm. I have been a resident of Montgomery County now going on almost 25 years. Um, after I went to college and Texas Tech University, I actually went on a full ride scholarship for all four years. Uh, otherwise, I don't think I have ever would have learned where Lubbock, Texas was. But <laughs> it's on the way to the mountains. It's on, it's on the way to something. Uh, but went out there and then just fell in love with it, started working corporate America through contract food service management, working with companies like Aramark and Marriott Sodexo. Uh, did that for almost 12 years and then decided uh, it was time for an early midlife crisis. And so I went to law school. And so went from there to South Texas College of Law here in Houston. Nice. There you go. Three for three on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, graduated from there and went out, started working with the Honorable Kathleen Hamilton, had the opportunity to work with her as part of an externship, um, and then actually be her briefing attorney for about a year and a half. Went then with a private firm because I wanted to learn, you know, if you're starting late in life, you want people to think you've been doing it a long time. So I exposed myself into different kinds of cases, not just black and white family law divorce cases. Things that were a little bit more challenging, things that got into different aspects of the code. And then in 2007, I opened my own practice, and I've been a solo practitioner here in Conroe ever since. So proud property owner there, proud property owner within the city of Conroe for the building that I work out of, um, and just am very excited about being able to represent families, and most importantly, being the voice for children. So Conroe used to be, we, and we talked about this, I think it was last episode, Conroe used to be kind of 
the ugly town in the neighborhood and the downtown is so beautiful now and <laughs> it it's, is absolutely it's vibrant great. and growing it's amazing they have the whole restorative district they have worked very hard to try to make some changes down there and really bring it up bring in local businesses um, so obviously as the property owner down there i'm extremely happy about that sure, sure. Um, but it's been very nice in talking with some of the groups that are doing that especially through the city that are really making some very significant changes and really bringing life back into the city of it's Conroe. It's happening down there. It now. is. It is. So tell us why you want to be a judge. Well, I have represented and been the voice of hundreds of children over the last 15 years. I shifted my practice about eight or nine years ago to be predominantly what we call an amicus attorney. So that is someone that represents the best interests of the children. So I go out, I get to know them, I meet them in their homes, uh, build rapport with them and it really the thing that I found and I say this all the time is family law is good people on bad behavior and so what happens a lot of times is the children are caught in the middle and I decided I wanted to find a way to get those children out and so I geared about 70 percent of my caseload which I still do today in that role of an amicus attorney to try to help those babies get out of the middle uh, and protect them and so okay. because of that I figure if I can touch this many hundreds of children on this level, imagine how many more I can try to touch and help if I'm in a higher position. And so you're running for county court at law number three, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, that court is primarily a CPS court, is that right? Actually, it's a family specialization court that okay. also incorporates the CPS uh, cases as well. Um, we used to have an individual CPS court. Mm -hmm. um, that was run by an associate judge. Then the judges, the family law judges, decided to bring those CPS cases over into their own respective courts. And then within the last year, year and a half, they mm -hmm. actually went and shifted over into just county court at law three. And so would you maintain that if you if elected judge, would you continue that as being the exclusive CPS court? Or You know, honestly, I think I really want to see what the numbers are because we're dealing with taxpayer dollars here, and I think it's important to understand is this the best way to do it. But obviously right now we have to keep that intact to continue mm -hmm. to help these children that are in this crisis. Um, the biggest thing for me is to go and see what is the most productive and efficient way so we can get more families through there because families cannot start healing until we give them closure in a courtroom. Sure. So, but we also have the other side of family law, which is non-CPS, and with 623,000 people in this county, they need assistance too. So I would focus on doing whatever we can to assist the most families to be able to get them through this. It's, it's really a trauma that they're going through when they get to this point. And so if people want to learn more about you, how can they look you up online? So we have our website, which is laurawatsonforjudge.com. Okay. Um, we have a Facebook account called Elect Laura Watson, where you can go in. That's a public website where you can go in as a public entity and see the things that we're doing, where we're going. Uh, see the times that we're volunteering and giving back to our community. Um, and, and so those are the easiest ways to find us. Okay. I think Carlos put it up on the screen for us. That's oh, a very perfect. bright website you have. Uh, yeah, you're not going to miss us. <laughs> so tell me why a campaign for the bench is the same thing as a campaign to become a judge. Well, I think it's important to understand when you're running in a candidacy, especially for a judicial position, you're not running against someone. You are running for that bench and to be a servant to our community. So it's like a relay race. Well, running for the bench. Kind of. It's what it sounds like. And I have a feeling in the next eight weeks, we're going to feel that way too. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's just, I think we have to remember that it's not against someone. It is for the opportunity and for the privilege to be able to serve and to be able to give back to our, the people within our community. Very good, very good. So what drew you to family law in general? So in general, I've always been passionate about kids anyway. I've always done volunteer work and working with kids in the past. Um, when I was in law school and became affixed to family law, that's when I decided, okay, this is where I can really make a difference. Uh, honestly, some of the other fields of law just didn't excite me, um, and this one did. And so I had a particular professor named Pamela George in South Texas uh, who was amazing. And she kind of took me in under wing and started teaching me, this is the importance. Here's where you make a difference. Here's some cases that I personally worked on, like the Valone case. Uh, you meet some of these attorneys that were down there. Like, um, you, they're so, like we had um, Rocky, uh, who used to be a judge, Rocky Moore, that he's actually... Uh, 
God, what's his first name? I'm, I'm called nervous, so I'm blowing it. But so Judge Moore, who is now actually in private practice, but you, you have them come and make presentations to you. And it's something to get excited about. And then I've carried that on and I actually live it because both of my children have now been adopted by my own husband. So it's something that we don't just talk about it. We live it. We do it. Very good. I think we are ready for a break. Stick around. When we come back, we will have government-issued Golden Boy in the studio with us, <laughs> and we will put Laura Watson on the hot seat. The hot seat. Here we go. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. There are a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. We all want to protect what we love. And we know that child safety seats and seatbelts save lives. Yet three out of four kids aren't buckled in correctly. And in 2016, 42% of Texas teens who died in crashes weren't wearing a seatbelt. Don't be a statistic. If you love it, click it. That includes you, too. Buckle up. Every rider... Every ride. To host a blood drive at your location, go to GiveBlood.org. When's the last time you heard this sound and actually called the police? Yeah, didn't think so. Top 40s. Dance. Latin. Country. Pop. Rock and roll. All at one station. 91.1 FM. The Boss. Time, here's the veteran voice of the legal fix, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Attorneys are licensed by the State Bar of Texas. Our three lawyers plus examining the witness are Bruce Huff, Brandon Riley, and Jeremy Hall. And when the action begins, the witness on the hot seat will answer as many questions with the fewest words as fast as they can. The Hot Seat is sponsored by The Legal Fix, a new age radio show brought to you by The Tough Law Firm. We're tough for you. And now, for those listening on the radio and Legal Fix fans watching around the world, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the Legal Fix Studios in the Woodlands, Texas. It's time! One lightning round for the undisputed Legal Fix Hot Seat Championship of the World. Thank you, Bruce. Welcome back to The Legal Fix. The Eraser. I am the Eraser, the Paula eraser. Hughes. I am substitute hosting today for The Big Deal, Bruce Tough. After I listen to him, I really like, want to fight. I'm super like, pumped up right now. I feel like I'm Very supposed to march out. out. 
Now, I'm here yeah. with Boy Wonder Brandon Riley, and we have been joined in this segment by the Golden Boy, Jeremy Hall. <laughs> I want to remind you of our today. number. You can Thank call you. with your legal questions, 936 900 2381. Today, we're also here with our special guest, Laura Watson, discussing her campaign That's for Lori the bench. That's Lori Watson to you, the eraser. <laughs> Lori, Laura Watson. Wait, why is it Lori? <laughs> we're going to get to that. So just save okay. it for the hot seat. Right, save it for the hot seat. I just seat. wanted to ask. Okay. Laura Watson, <laughs> campaign for the yeah. bench in Montgomery County Court of Law, number three. Now, <laughs> we're going to put her on the hot seat. Yes, we are. Jeremy, will you swear in the witness? I will. Uh, Lori, have you seen the hot seat before? Do I go ahead and just get ready? I'm used to swearing. Okay. That <laughs> Cussing or? No, 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 no. Swearing in. Swearing in. Swearing in. Just confirmed. I, already I right embarrassingly down in that trench, tried to swear myself in when we swore the witnesses in at an administrative law hearing. And the J ALJ was like, what are you doing, Mr. Hall? Put your hand down. Are you testifying today? And I was like, oops. Was like, just <laughs> making sure everybody's the aware. Yeah, were just, made. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Have you seen the hot seat before? I have. Okay. Excellent. So you know what the deal is. You're going to serve as the witness in a rapid fire cross examination where the three of us, the erasers subbing in for Bruce Tough, will be asking you our toughest questions the back toughest to Toughest to questions. Toughest questions. We <sighs> actually have the champ the current champ champ of the hot seat with us right now, and it is the eraser. She the mowed, eraser. The eraser. <laughs> That's she what they tell me. <laughs> she mowed down one question every two and a half seconds. Oh wow. Yeah, she she absolutely crushed she the kills hot seat. It. Okay, so pursuant to the eraser's crush of the hot seat we limited you to one free pass every mm -hmm. pass after your one free pass results in a 10 second penalty oh, the, okay. the eraser passed a buku question so we had to put a limit on passes okay <laughs> now you can raise your right hand I was gonna say, now we hey, know how to do two and a half seconds side note we had to i had to research this the other day if an attorney isn't sworn in and attempts to give testimony and the other attorney doesn't object to it yeah it, is waived. When in doubt, just raise your hand. Yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like that's that was a yeah. good. Okay, I was in Sorry. the right. Okay, you can throw in your stunner shades now. Okay, here we go. Okay, state your full name for the record. Laura Elizabeth Watson. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and your version of the truth <laughs> to answer the most questions with the least words as fast as you can? Absolutely. She ready. She's ready. How um, do you spell Marlboro Red? Marlboro Red. <laughs> Oh my gosh, M A R L B O R O R E D. Very good. Very good. <laughs> wow. Are you related to Deshaun Watson? No. Denise Watson? No. Sherlock Holmes's best friend, Dr. Watson? No. What do you eat on your Marburger? Well, first, what On my Marburger? Yeah, medium, 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 medium rare. Well I'm a done. medium rare kind of girl. Okay. okay, lettuce, tomato, onions, pickles? Lettuce, pickles. Okay, next. Isn't it true you matriculated at Texas Technical University? Uh, yes, ma'am, I did. And what's your mascot? We have Raider Red, and then we also have the Master Rider. Uh, what do y'all what do raid? What do we raid? <laughs> Anything that we can, but we're just trying to win those football I, games. Is Raider Red a horse? No, Raider Red is actually the mascot. He looks like Yosemite Sam. He does look like Yosemite yeah. Sam, or and the so, hamburglar <laughs> with the mask. <laughs> that just got a color dye on his mustache and beard. So yeah, yes. he has a legit <laughs> Russell Brish. He does, he does. Raider stash. <laughs> So what's your rally cry? So it's uh, get your guns up. I don't like that terminology. Yeah, that sounds. I think you're gonna well, get canceled. Well, it is it is West Texas, so, we so let's remember that. that. Yeah. Let's cancel. Let's cancel that. Eighty six. That. <laughs> Isn't it true you're in a relationship with Denzel Washington? Not Denzel. The guy from County Court One. <laughs> well, maybe he's called that, but uh, Dennis no. Washington. <laughs> Dennis Denise, Washington. Denise Watson. Dennis Watson. Dennis. Okay. Yes. How, how many children have you birthed? Two. Which is your favorite? Oh, I have to say I love them both. Now, they're very different. <laughs> is it your government name, Laura? My government? Yeah. Your official it, birth certificate name, is it Laura? Yes. Okay. So what does Lori get you? So Lori was my nickname given by my mother, who was a hopeless romantic, who her favorite movie was Dr. Zhivago. And if anybody oh, knows the Dr. song, the love thing from Dr. Zhivago, that song is called Lori. It takes years off your name. I know. <laughs> it makes me think of Mean Girls, though. Oh, yeah. for Lori or Laura? It, sounds, it Lori. sounds like a mall rat. It sounds like a really fun name. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's not an L-O-R-I. It's L-A-U-R-I-E. So that's that very softens it a little bit. That's very distinguished. Eraser. <laughs> Were you a good kid? 
I had my moments where I wasn't, but for the most part, yes. I mean, I'm being honest. I got sworn in. You sworn in. Got to tell the truth. How old were you when you got your ears pierced? Oh, my goodness. I think I was 15. Oh, okay. She was good. Do you have a will? I do. A prenup? No. How much money will it take for you to retire? Well, well, not enough. What's your God-given hair color? Brown. Have you ever received a permanent? Yes. What kind of hair product do you use? Redken. Next Halloween. Oh, gosh. Will you go as Sarah Countrywoman? <laughs> uh, no. C Caitlyn Jenner? N I wish. No. C Camilla Harris? <laughs> no. Natalie Laurent, but a more modest version. A more... Mo <laughs> Covered up. Covered up. Cover uh, up. You better cover not. up. Cover Pro up. If you saw this, I would just say no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Next. How often do you check social media? Um, I would say once to twice a day, honestly. But that all started with this campaign. <laughs> so you check it more often during the campaign? Well, I never had social media prior to this campaign. Hmm. What apps do you use? Um, just Facebook is really the only one I'm using on that. Are you posting, commenting? Yeah. Both. Trolling hot threads? Uh, the eraser doesn't know what that means. She has no <laughs> idea. I'm going to say no on that one. We're going to keep uh, that one right there. Beg your <laughs> pardon. Was the Turnpike Troubadour song about you? Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. And have you cried in the last year? Oh, absolutely. Month? Mm, yes. Week? No. Okay. okay. Sum up your life philosophy in a word or phrase. Oh, wow. Um, honesty, compassion, loyalty. Nice. I like that. <laughs> It's a phrase, Paula. That's her phrase. <laughs> did I just steal yours? No. Uh, she did good on that one. More than okay, one let's word. keep it moving. What's one thing people don't know about you that you want them to know? Um, probably the one thing that most people don't know is that I went to college on a full ride golf scholarship. Whoa. Nice. Did not start playing golf until I was a sophomore in high school, and my goal was I just want to win a tournament and be nationally ranked. I accomplished that my junior year, won my second tournament my senior year. How far can you mash it? Well, not very far anymore, so I've had back surgery and a torn rotator cuff. How far Ooh. could you mash it? Um, I'd say my drives were probably around 250, 260. Dang! We're going to need verification. Do you have video or Beast. pictures of that? Um, from a long time ago, so yeah, okay. that's when I had a no perm, video. so you may not happen. recognize me. <laughs> was it confusing for people when you changed your name? Yes. From Laura to Lori? Well, actually, I've always <laughs> gone by Laura from a legal standpoint. How about from Smashburger to Watson? From Smashburger to Watson. Um, well, I did a that hyphenated for a while. <laughs> you did? Okay. Oh, you did? That's good. I, like I did that to try to transition and dropped it jerseys. down. How many mediations have you conducted? <laughs> oh, hundreds. Um, How about cases? How many cases have you tried? Hundreds. At a girl. Very good. Assuming you're the top dog, who's the second best family law attorney and mediator in top Montgomery County? Dude. Oh, that is a tough one. We have some really good attorneys out there. Um... I don't know that I could actually give a direct answer. There's a ton of them out there that I would take as co-counsel or love to go up with any day of the week. What's the meanest thing you've said to a parent as an amicus attorney? You're screwing up. Did that make them cry? Um, when I went on to explain how they were hurting their children and put their children in the middle, I've had a couple of them to have. Did we ask this? What's the most humble job you've ever had? Being a mother. Nice. If you could be Eraser. anything other than an attorney or a judge, what would you be? Um, it would be doing something where I would continue to deal with children, um, serve on boards. Like, I'm already on a number of boards that service and assist children already. I'd probably focus more on that. What's your favorite lawyer movie or show? My Cousin Vinny. What's your favorite place you've ever been? Um, I would say, actually, Argentina. Mm, Argentina. What's the fastest you've ever gone in a car? I'm going to have to pass on that one. <laughs> Who's smarter, you or Dennis? Definitely me, according to Dennis. <laughs> Would you rather be whacked in the head by a Nerf bat by Aaron Judge or lightly trampled during the running of the Bulls during Pamplona, in Pamplona? Since I've already been whacked in the head with a Nerf bat, I'm going to go with that one. Okay. Aaron Judge is a beast, though. <laughs> yeah, he is. What's a better a pet, guy. a fruit bat or a titmouse? Ugh. Neither one of those really apply to me. 100-yard <laughs> dash, you versus Steven Jackson, the attorney not in the NFL running back. Who coughs first? 
probably Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather eat Texans tube steak with Deshaun Watson after a couple's massage or uncooked Marl Burgers with Mattress Mac for what would ultimately be his last meal? Well, if those were my only two options, I think I'm going to have to go for the latter with Mattress Mac. Mattress Mac, last <laughs> meal, buddy. We love you, Mattress Mac. We do. He's a good guy. Rusty Harden or Tony Busby? Rusty Harden. Why does Deshaun Watson need so many massages? That's an excellent question, but, you know, the question is, is that really a massage? Yeah, well, 40 plus, you know, you'd think he would have found one that he likes by now, but he, he hasn't. Did you love the hot seat? I thought this was fun. Had a girl. Good <laughs> job. <laughs> Lori Watson, excellent job. Rolled with it. Indeed. Thank you. Well, today we've been discussing a campaign for the bench with our special guest, Laura Watson, yes, a candidate have. for Montgomery County Court at All Law right. Number 3. And now it's time for Boy Wonder with some hot topics. Hot topics. Ah. Yeah, I think the it. hottest topic, the Brittany's one that we... been acquitted. What do you think about that? I don't know. I think she's a ding dong, actually. Just truth, <laughs> truth be told, I don't think she's as smart as you guys are making her out to Who be. Who said? I never said. I think she she's smart. barely smart enough to manage her own estate. Do you think her dad was a better manager? Probably. Maybe. Maybe he was right. I guess time si will tell. Siphoning off a little bit too much, but <laughs> if you read the script of her testimony to the judge and how many medications she's still on, I mean, she's she's basically stuck in fifteen year old life. Whenever she, she she's first still came in out, the mouse she's not club? doing anything different. <laughs> yeah, I, if Mickey she was still in the club? mouse club, she'd be in better shape. Which just maybe she should have married Justin Timberlake. <laughs> oh my gosh! Boy <laughs> wonders a big Britney Spears fan. He's the 2021 Chris Crocker, so we like to give him a hard time about that. Leave Y'all have to be nice to Britney. <laughs> so the biggest deal right now is the Aguilera is Bruce Tough Maderos. Yeah, that is actually okay. That is <laughs> the biggest this deal. This is Paula. Agreed. This is me with Paula Agreed. every day. She always corrects me. Hello, so, Bruce. We love you. Oh, yeah, ski, we miss you. We thought you were going to call her. Drinking <laughs> schnapps out of your ski pole <laughs> handles. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, so Aguilera was sentenced to 110 years for the fatality trucking accident in Colorado. Uh, he was convicted of four counts of vehicular homicide and 23 other counts. And I Whoa. think that this is huge news because he wasn't on drugs. He wasn't drinking. His brakes went out. And rather than running off the cliff and killing himself, he ended up right. running into traffic going 85. So he should have swerved off the cliff. I, At this point, I think so. I think dying would be better than spending 110 years in jail. But Jeez. as it sits right now, he has a hearing on January 13th for a potential uh, reduction of his sentence. And he's asked for clemency from the governor. So Who gave him the sentence? Was it a judge? It was mandatory. The judge actually said at the at the law, outset, right. correct. He the judge actually said, "I would not sentence you to this, but I have no option. This is the state mandatory minimum for each of the sentences, and many of them couldn't be served concurrently. They had to be served consecutively." Juicy so, J is doing the concurrent action for his right, and and we talked about this before we went on air. I mm -hmm. think that someone negligently killing someone in a vehicular accident. Is completely different than some of the other crimes that get two, four, six years, and then right. you're out, and it yeah. doesn't make any sense. Child molestation being one of them. Exactly. And I think that it's insane. But we will have more for you very soon after we see this uh, hearing on the 13th and what happens from there. So that's the biggest news in the legal realm right now. That's a tough yeah. position to be in if you're the driver in that situation. Well, the petition, I think, is over $5 million on wanting it to be reduced and— because he's a kid. He's only in his early 20s. I mean, wow. Just a kid. No driving record. Right. There was no Who's drugs Who's responsible or alcohol. for the brakes going out? I think as a driver, you're always first line you of responsibility. Check okay. Because in, in the technical sense, it's your truck when you're driving it. Yeah. Even if you're driving you it for check the company. got to check it before you saddle But up. I think the company bears some responsibility for that, too. He was a brand new trucker. I mean, he was a kid. Yeah. And just a point, youngster. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of truck drivers are boycotting Colorado altogether and just avoiding it. Because, because of that. Are the laws any better in the neighboring states or any other states? I think that the reaction comes from the, the harshness of the sentence and the mandatory minimums that he was given. Yeah. Uh, maybe I don't like know that it's better in the other states, but they don't want. Solidarity with the exactly. guy like, hey, let's, let's fix it. If he was it. drunk driving or, or on drugs, then I think it would be a completely different story, but yeah. he wasn't. Yeah. And so it's just a tragedy across yeah. the board for all the families involved. How as many well people as died? Driver. Four. Okay. Four people died. 
So that's the big topic in legal news. I know it's kind of a, a depressing yeah, one, it's but a it's an important one. Okay. So, yes, back to you. Well, today we've been discussing the a campaign eraser. for the bench with our special guest, Laura Watson. Campaign, campaign for judge, right, Paula? Campaign Laura for judge. <laughs> She's wow. uh, the candidate for the Montgomery County Court at Law Number 3. Yes, ma'am. And I'm the eraser, Paula Hughes, with Boy <laughs> Wonder, Brandon Riley. <laughs> the eraser. Super lawyer G.I. Jerome, the golden boy, Jeremy Hall. Government issued. <laughs> We'll see you in 2022 for another episode of The Legal Fix. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Happy New Year everyone. Year, everyone. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you.